whole lot about it anyway. It doesn't change me anyhow. <laughs> Death can tell you she's tried for years. <laughs> Still the same. Still the same after all these years. That was the theme of my senior class in school. I was singing it in the shower last night. I was thinking about that. My senior class, I'm still the same. as I feel like I'm a senior in high school until I got out of the tub. And, oh, it still hurt to get out of the tub. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. See, it's, <laughs> I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> i got to quit getting off of these rabbit trails. That's what i got to quit doing. It, if we think we've reached the limit, we got to understand our container is too small. we got to pray that God will increase the size of our uh, containers. We've got to enlarge our vision and make room for the new things that God has for us. That's one of the reasons we're doing some of the things we're doing. It's not because, you know, <coughs> any kind of a program that we offer or any kind of a paint job that we have, and I'm going to tell you, Brother Al, he's a good trim man. You ever need a trimming, not a haircut necessarily, but, you know, paint. He's a good trim man, but you're going to have to pay him to do it. Because hair too. So there you go. Get your hair cut and get your, your house trimmed and then give him some money for doing it. Uh, a workman's worthy of his hire is what I believe. And he's, he, he's getting paid with blessings for doing the things he does right here and the rest of you to do that same kind of work. I'm going to tell you, Samantha, she does it. Bless her heart. That girl likes working. I begin to think she lives at the church secretly. <laughs> Every time I look at her, I say, oh, Samantha's over to church. I don't know what she's doing, but I, I, bless her heart. She, she wants God to use her, and I'm thankful to see that. I'm bragging on some people. Not just because they're unusual or different than you, but just because they've caught my attention and I believe they've caught God's attention and I think you're catching God's attention too because His eyes are roaming to and fro throughout the earth seeking those whose hearts belong to Him that are inclined towards Him, that have a heart for Him so that He may show Himself strong yeah. on their behalf. Not that He might make things worse, that he might make things better. <laughs> that he might bless them. God's looking for people like you and me. So let's tell him, look over here. Stevenson can become the epicenter. <laughs> Stevenson can make a difference. You hear people say all kinds of things. So this is where they get to. Well... I really don't know what the economy is. I've been hearing the economy is bad all my life. I, I I don't know if it was ever good. Has it been good? Some people say so. But most of all, I mean, oh, the economy is bad. Well, it depends on who's running for office, which way they're going to go with it. If it looks like Republican, they're going to win. The Democrats say the economy is bad. If it's a Democrat going to win, the Republicans are going to, oh, the economy is bad. <laughs> Everybody wants to, oh, you know, the economy is down, but I know that God is still on the throne, and I know wherever I go, His goodness and His goodness and mercy shall follow me. We sang it this morning. I didn't give her any clues. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be! I know this country singer by the name of Thad Cockrell. I went to Liberty University. And he, he doesn't sing on a Christian label. He sings on a secular label. But he still sings about Jesus and they like it anyhow. Rolling Stone magazine reviewed him and said he put out one of the best albums a few years ago. And there's a song in there called There Will Be a Great Rejoicing. I wrote him a letter. And I said, Thad... I was going through a tough time. I said, Thad, your songs have been helping me this year. And he wrote me back. He said, I can't. I'm so. Uh, somebody tell me that. He said, it just blew me away. Thank you. I wanted him to understand that he was, he was doing far more than he thought he was. I said, you got a bald-headed old Pentecostal preacher being blessed by your music. And I don't think it bothered him. Although he, that wasn't where he came from. 
Well, you can say all that stuff that you want to. You can have that kind of an attitude if you want to. But if you want to start increasing your capacity to receive so that you can live that abundant life that God has in store for you. And some of you say, well, I don't believe that thing about the abundant life. Well, here's what I wanted to do today. Just to bless you. This is how I'm going to finish this up. You're thinking, he'll never finish this up, but I will. Psalms 23, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, that sounds pretty good. See, I'm not just picking out, I'm not picking out themes in Scripture. And I'm telling you, it, when I started doing this story, it was overwhelming. I started studying this, and it was like, man, there is way too much. There is so much in the Bible about how good God is, and we're missing it. Somehow, we'll only go to the parts where there's judgment. <laughs> yes, God does judge. And yes, God has wrath toward sin. You heard me say it. I heard you, you heard me say that when we suffer, God will be with us. And we will suffer because we live in a broken and a bent world. But that doesn't change the fact that God is good. And we've got to believe that God is good even when things are bad. Then change God's nature. In the book in Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 9, it says, Therefore know that the Lord your God, He is God, the faithful God who keeps His promises. He keeps His covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love Him and keep His commandments. Keep yourself under the spout where the glory comes out and God will love you for, He'll love your family for a thousand generations. I know why I'm like I am. Because my great-grandma Kelly got on her face and prayed for me before I was born. All the preachers and evangelists and missionaries that have come out of my mama's side of the family. I think that happened because I had a praying great-grandmother who had faith. I've got, I've got, I won't read all these verses. I've got a whole lot out of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28. I will mention the lovely kindnesses of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord has bestowed upon us and the great goodness that he has shown towards the house of Israel which he has bestowed on them according to his oh, because we get according to his mercies. According to his loving kindnesses. What Solomon said, the mercies of the Lord, but he was David. The mercies of the Lord are new every morning. Oh, I hope God's good today. He is. He's good every day. And I was telling Joel the other day, I mean Joel Dems. I was telling Dems about my pastor Joel. He, he had an answer machine. He did a radio show. And every, this was his sign off. This was his his catchphrase, he'd say, and God bless you, and he does. And God bless you, and he does. He just went ahead and interjected. See, so that's how Joel McGraw, I got two pages of this, so I'm going to stop right there. But that's how Joel McGraw prayed with my father, who wouldn't even darken the door of a church, who, who got mad because people <coughs> talked about Jesus. And I'm in the hospital, my dad, this is right before I moved to West Virginia. And I'm up there at Redstone Arsenal in the hospital visiting with my dad. He's real sick. He was to never get out of the hospital again. I didn't know that then, but that was it. And my pastor Joel came to see him. They both grew up in the best county in the world, Connecticut County, in Alabama, where they have the best sausage in the world. If you can't buy it, get online and order it. See if I'm wrong. Mm -mm. Connecticut County sausage. Connecticut brand of sausage. Joel McGraw, my pastor, that was his granddaddy's recipe. <laughs> I don't know how I got off on that. But anyway, my daddy was raised on a farm in Connecticut County. He's older than Joel, but he was raised on a farm, just like Joel McGraw was. Not just a few miles separated them. Some of them probably made the mistake of marrying dolls. I don't know. There was a lot of them around there then. But they grew up, they had a very similar background, so my daddy always liked Joel. Because Joel didn't come in and act like a preacher. He came in there and act like a boy from Connecticut County who grew up on a farm. Which is what he was. 
So he said, well, Kurt, that's what he called my dad. He said, well, Kurt, I'm going to go, uh, but I want to have prayer with you first. Is that okay? And I'm starting to tense up already. I just hope it, you know, I, don't, I really don't want him cussing out Joel. He can cuss out the nurses and the doctors, but I appreciate it if he didn't cuss out Joel. He said, that'd be fine. So we all join hands. I'm holding my daddy's hand, and I'm holding Joel's hand. And Joel just starts praying. And Joel says, Father, I want to thank you today that Kurt has a broken heart before you, that he knows he's lived his life in sin, but it's time to stop. He knows that this is the day that he says yes to you. This is the day that he accepts you as his Lord and Savior. This is the day he repents of his sins. This is the day that he becomes a Christian. And I mean, my mind is blowing. I'm thinking, when did all that happen? I've been here the whole time. When did all that happen? And when he got through praying, pray, and I looked at my daddy, and I almost never saw my daddy crying tears were just pouring out of his eyes. And Joel looked over at him. He said, I was right, wasn't I? My daddy said, yes, you are. I want to pray. And Joel helped him to pray a prayer. And a month later, my daddy left and went to heaven. And how much that means to me, oh, I could just never tell you. See, here's the thing. Joel increased his capacity of faith over my daddy. I've been praying for that man. At that time, I've been a Christian for 15 years. I've been praying about that man for 15 years, and you could have knocked me over with a feather. What kind of faith did I have? I was praying for him, but when he got saved, it shocked me. I was surprised. Why was I surprised? Because God answered prayer. It was always God's will. It's God's will for everybody. Oh, Lord, please save my son, my daughter, my husband, my wife. It is already God's will. Don't ask God to keep doing what he wants to do. Agree with him about it. I agree for their salvation. Lord, you are the one who saves them. I agree. They, they, they're going to be saved and I don't even know it yet. They're going to fall off a, of a tree, I guess right here, like an apple. One <laughs> well, of good apples will fall off a tree just ripe and red. Because God has plowed that soil. And God has planted that seed. And God has watered it with the Holy Ghost. The devil tried to make the weeds choke it out, but it didn't happen. Now we're going to see a harvest of righteousness. I'm not interested in gaining anybody's church members. I'm interested in new growth. That's real growth. I don't want anybody shifting. Oh, we, we didn't like this church, so we will shift over to that church. I, that, that doesn't appeal to me. Might make me feel good. Oh, yeah, look at that. I got 50 people on one Sunday. But that's not really growth in the kingdom. Is it? That's just moving it around. That's just reshifting the car. What I want to see is new cars. <laughs> what I want to see is babies in Christ. So we've got to increase our capacity. We've got to believe that this place is for more than it is right now. I'm not talking to you. If you think I'm a numbers guy, ask them. I don't even I don't even know how many pints are in a quart. Or is it quarts in a pint? See, I don't even know. How many inches are in the yard or how many yards are in an inch? I don't know. Numbers are not what I'm interested in. People are what I'm interested in. Because the kingdom of God is upon us. It's as close as your own hand. John preached it. Jesus affirmed it. Repent therefore. Be ready. Be ready. I want to start having some old-fashioned repentance services. I want our art altars well, there. Well, I want this carpet to get stained with tears. <laughs> I want. I, don't worry about that. That's good thing. I want people to bleed their sins out and get the glory of God back in. That's what I want. I believe it's God's will for it to happen. And I believe it will. And I believe God's going to use you and me to see that it does. 
I just went over this morning during Sunday school, forget, Roy can forgive me, I went over during Sunday school and met my neighbors over here. I've been ashamed I hadn't been over there before then, and it shocked all of them when I walked up. They were working on cars, they wouldn't even, they wouldn't even shake hands with me, their hands were so greasy, so we did the fist bump thing. <laughs> they were shocked, and I introduced myself to them, and I said, I'm the pastor of that church right over there right now. I said, I'd like to tell you fellows, anytime you want to come to church, come on. We'd love to have you. I said, you look at me, see, we're not fancy. We're just people. We're just people who love Jesus. And that's what we have to offer. And I said, and besides that, we'll feed you too sometimes. So we have these free meals every now and then. <laughs> so I, I thought, small thing could reap a big harvest. Father, today, let's all stand right now, and I want you to pray right now for God to strengthen and enlarge your testimony. Lord, I want more than what I've believed for. I want more than even what I've dreamed for. Lord, I pray that you would help me to increase my spirit so that I could be a part of what you're doing here. Lord, I know that 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 preaching and teaching is a big part of it. But Lord, I know it's not going to happen without all of us. This is not driven because of the pastor and his wife and a few people. It's going to be all of us praying. It's going to be all of us doing. It's going to be all of us acting. It's going to be our hands at work. It's going to be our mouths praying and talking. It's going to be us. Not just saying we believe it, but doing we believe it. Lord, help us to take our faith. James says, our faith without works is dead. In other words, it's nothing. But faith that is alive is accompanied by action. Yes. And what is that action? Why don't you ask God for that? Lord, what would you have me to do? Yes. It may seem kind of odd, but look, I wouldn't expect them to go to church and school and meet people. But I did. <laughs> Look for opportunities. Look, I thought if I wait till life for church, them fellas are going to be inside and be too hot. Look for opportunities. And do what you can. Don't do more than what you can. You can't do more than what you can. Let God do more than what you can. You, you go as far as you can go, then let God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you that increases upon us, that you are enlarging our capacity beyond 50 gallons. Lord, we want to have, we want to have the river of God in this place. Yes. A river that is rushing and mighty and rapid. That it will be filled with the glory of God. Lord, we declare it and proclaim it today. We receive your word with joy and blessing. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you can say it, say, I receive it, Lord. I receive it, Lord. Hallelujah. I receive it, Lord. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. We appreciate each one of you. And we'll see you again soon.